30 second board let's turn it sideways and get to the hot topics in the sport this is wild we keep adding new teams we've already heard triumph is going to go racing in super motocross world championship next year there's a lot of rumors that ducati along a road racing brand is going to go motocross and maybe supercross racing down the line and now beta who we had kind of quietly heard in the background beta a trials and enduro brand well just just as we can a huge splash they're racing supercross next year with benny bloss yeah, and they've been around in MXGP for a bit. They've been working towards this goal. Uh, Jeremy Van Horbeek was racing the beta and, and was finding success. You know, there were certain certain dynamics and certain tracks where they were doing a little bit better than the other, and that's normal as they continue to develop this, this motocross side of the brand. But yes, this is a huge step forward, jumping into the deep end for 2024 at Sounds and, and Monster Energy Supercross. So the more the merrier. It sounds like there are more maybe Italian brands on the way, um, but this uh, this is awesome. This sounds great. Yeah, and uh, Benny, who uh, got hurt at the end of Supercross, he's always fast, so you never know. He could really do some damage on that bike if they put that thing together. That'll be in Supercross next year, and they said maybe select motocross rounds, but they're starting with just half the season next season. We mentioned it at the top of the show, but we got to give credit here to Danger Boy, and we'll talk more when we get into Fowler's facts, but it's amazing for Hayden Deegan to do this at age 17. And what impresses me the most, look at how well he held up under pressure from a guy who's won a lot, his teammate, Justin Cooper. Yeah, this is incredible. And I think the most uh, impressive part of this was how he got it done. Uh, Justin Cooper was sitting there the entire time and, and Hayden was very aware of who was back there. He knows Justin Cooper has been a championship contender in this class for a very long time. And he also knows that Justin Cooper really wants to win, right? He's coming off of not such a great opener, and this was an opportunity for him to go win. And he's got this rookie, and, and I'm putting myself into the mind of Hayden coming down to these last few laps where Justin Cooper's trying to close the gap. It would have been so easy for him to fold there and, and let his experienced veteran teammate go by, but no, no. Hayden picked the pace up. He really showed I think his fitness and his determination and that he belongs. And that, that is a huge step in, in Hayden's process is to deliver a message to not only Hunter, Justin Cooper, and whoever else fancies himself as champion of this class, that he can stay there at the front. And when it comes down to the last few laps, he can actually extend the lead back out. Yeah, I think there was actually some bristling from the Deegan camp with a lot of us experts saying like, well, he's a rookie. He's there to learn. It'll come eventually. I think he genuinely is like, no, if I'm racing, I'm trying to win races. And if I'm in a series, I want to win the title no matter how young I am. So this is definitely something to watch going forward. Although I, I must mention, he's never been to our next track at Thunder Valley. So we'll see how quickly he can learn that. Man, with the highs also come lows. We had some nasty first turn wrecks in both classes over the weekend. First of all, Jeremy Martin, it goes from bad to worse. Season was not going well. And this was gruesome that we actually had this footage and Unfortunately, J-Mart 250 class is going to be out for a while, JT. Tough deal. Um, just seems like when you can't really go any further down, you know, more, just more lows for, for J-Mart. And he was so optimistic coming into this series. He was talking championship and a bounce back opportunity and all those things. And it just, he gets off to this horrible opener, right, at Paula. Just nothing goes to plan. And you're like, okay, well, surely it's going to get better from here. And then no, it gets worse first corner big injury and yeah you just hope that mentally he can find a way to come back from this because losing him if he decided that this was it it would be a big blow to the sport it's the two-time champion we're talking about he adds a lot of course his family is so involved in the sport hosting one of these pro motocross events and uh yeah just just hoping for the best for jay mark but man that was gruesome yeah in the last couple of years he has definitely taken some hits he's 30 years old now so hopefully we get him back uh, sooner rather than later than the 450 class I mean, this is just carnage. This is like, I don't know, six, eight bikes, and this crash just kept going. I saw Grant Harlan sitting in a hay bale. JT, I swear, bikes were still crashing, and he was already out. Yeah, and it. I think it could have been a lot worse. You know, when you have guys that are crashing at that high of speed, and there's that much body and metal flying in every direction, you, you start to think about the worst-case scenario sometimes. But it looked like everybody got up. I'm sure people were banged up and, and maybe some smaller injuries, but... We, we were able to keep racing. A lot of the guys, even like Corey Carson, got up and tried to do laps. You know, Grant Harwin got back into the race. I was actually standing in the mechanics area when he came in to make some adjustments so he could try to get back out there and still get some points. So, one, it speaks to how fast and violent this sport is, but also, two, these guys are warriors. Grant Harwin flipped through the air, 
took out several tough blocks, got up, and his first thought was, I need to get back out there and try to get some points. Yeah, well, Grant's one of these privateers that knows the doors open. Super Bowl Cross World Championship to make big money in the playoffs coming in September. So every point's going to count for him and a lot of others that were down there. And that's uh, sprinkling over to our next topic, which is international flair. We've talked already about the Australians, the Lawrence brothers out front. You got Joe Shimoda running well, as usual. A great second moto from Tom Vial, the, the Frenchman coming over from the MXGP series. And then also, what is this? Jose Boutron from Spain. Uh, Venezuela with uh, Lorenzo LaCurcia, the Wildcat racing team. I didn't even know this team was racing this year. These guys are top 10 every moto. So a lot of international flair right now. Yeah, it's great. And to your point, I know you've said this many times, just show up, right? If you yeah. can just show up sometimes, good things happen. And for these guys, they're just being opportunistic. Of course, you have to ride well and execute and be in shape and all those things. But when the doors open and there are injuries throughout the field, this is their time to shine. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget, not only Australians out front, but you have Ferrandis, who's second in points, a Frenchman. Uh, Shimoda, as mentioned, already a contender. Freddie Noren from Sweden. It's just a, a real uh, potpourri of people from all over the globe coming here to race in America. Uh, but it seems like the the, the 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 one loss, the big loss in the 450 class, Ferrandis is second in points. It's because Chase Sexton is out. Now, we don't know what would have happened if Sexton had raced in Hangtown. Maybe Ferrandis in that group does make gains on him. It's amazing that Honda is able to absorb this. They just lost the Monster Energy Supercross champ, and they keep on rolling. But that's a, a big loss. And JT got to ask their team manager, Lars Lindstrom, about Sexton's condition. Yeah, so unfortunately on Tuesday, uh, we were testing out at Paula again after the race there uh, with the multi-team tests that we do. And Chase um, had a tip over that we actually didn't see. I shouldn't say a tip over. He had a crash. And uh, enough to where he, he hit his head and... Um, immediately he kind of knew there was something different about it and, and so um, he went got checked out and was uh, diagnosed with a, with a concussion and uh, at the same time because of his the way he was feeling and wasn't feeling 100 percent he was also diagnosed with mono so um, right now we're uh, we don't have an exact timeline we're really hoping that he can have he can be back for the next race uh, next week in Colorado um, but at the same time mono is not the easiest thing to get over so um, we're kind of playing it by ear and um, we're really hoping to get him back sooner than later, though. We, we miss him a lot. All right, so really a bummer there. And the, the craziest part about this, I think, JT, is we really don't know what the timeline is now for Chase. Well, and for Honda, they went 20 years without being, having anyone that could get this championship done. And now they have redundancy. Like, they have a backup plan. I don't even know who the backup plan is. Is Jet the backup plan? Is Sexton the backup plan? I don't know, but they are blessed with riches, right? It, it's incredible how the, the pendulum swings violently in both directions here where they just cannot find a way to get it done. And now they're like, well, just take our pick. If, if one guy needs to take a couple weeks off, no problem. We still have the best guy, even if he wasn't our initial Monster Energy Supercross champion coming in. So uh, yeah, it must be nice to be uh, to be HRC Honda right now. Yeah, and that does continue with those Lawrence brothers out front. And with those wins with Jet Lawrence going 4-0, there's only one other rider that's done that in this class used to be the 252 stroke class, now 454 stroke class. And that's the great Jeff Ward. Speaking of Kawasaki, who was 4 0 to start his career in this class, uh, that was all the way back in 1985. So, Wardy, good on you, buddy. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he's a legend. Kawasaki forever, right? Going back to the days of uh, on any Sunday, you think about Jeff Ward wheeling yeah. through in the background. Um, yeah, just an incredible two win and and now jed is set is tying that same record with uh first four motos so great yeah. reference there I, I we're gonna have jet probably mentioned amongst legends in record books and race wins probably for a long time now so this is just the the beginning of that and all of this all this leads to our super motocross world championship point standings as we are now combining the points from supercross and motocross together to create seating and rankings to get into the playoffs at the end of the year and here's what's so intriguing. So Jet Lawrence doesn't have any 450 points from Monster Energy Supercross. And now JT, he has slid into the top 20 already with four 450 motos under his belt. Dylan Ferrandis has done the same, barely raced in Supercross. So it has really started to get interesting now that we look. Here's the big mover, Cooper Webb, quietly looking to get into that number one rank because Sexton didn't score points over the weekend. This is playing out well for Cooper. 
Yeah, and, and Webb is going to be a ben, big benefactor, right? And it goes back to the just show up thing. He is going to be paid dividends as we roll into September and these playoffs go. Who knows what happens in this Pro Motocross Championship? Stranger things have happened than Cooper Webb sitting around, racking up points, and then being really opportunistic when, the, when opportunity is there. So we'll see how that plays out. But if you think about how that looks in September, he's doing himself a lot of favors by climbing up the rankings here with guys like Sexton out and Tomac out and a lot of the just unfortunate injuries that have happened. But I have a feeling, I have a feeling that Jet's going to continue to climb the, the leaderboard here. Don't quote me on that, but I have a, if there's a place that I can make a wager on Jet continuing to climb, let me know because I would be very interested. Don't bother because the, the odds against him would be so small. You'd, if you bet a dollar, you'd make a dollar and one cent. Uh, for Jet winning these races. That's how good it looks right now. And here's what they're all chasing. We're actually going to post the payout here so everybody knows. In the Super Motocross World Championship of the 450 division, the world champion will win $1 million. Now, that sounds awesome and spectacular, no doubt about it. But there have been million-dollar prizes. We, we had the Monster Energy Cup back in the day, and a couple riders, Brian Villapoto, Eli Tomac, Marvin Muscan, won the million-dollar payout. Not only is the million-dollar payout in that class a headline, but it's 500,000 to win the 250 championship. But all the other positions, when you look here, what sticks out to me is 100 grand for eighth place overall in the 450 rankings, just an example. 25,000, I believe, for 22nd in the 450 class. So what sticks out to me here, JT, is all these riders on the sidelines, maybe they're struggling. You use the term silver lining. That's the silver lining. If you can just get in and do something, you're still gonna make a ton of money in September. Yeah, that, that headline number, you know, $5.5 million is awesome. And, and the winner is going to get the lion's share of that, which he should. But to me, the most impressive part is the breadth, right? You go down the list and it is significant amounts of money as you go lower into the field. And if you're a privateer guy, even if you're one of the factory guys that happens to make a lot of money, this is money that grabs your attention. And uh, I think it's great for the sport. Thank you to all the powers that be this I, as a former racer, I understand all too well how much this can completely change your career and the, and the trajectory of your, your life, really. So it's a great opportunity, and I think all of these guys have to take it very seriously. Even on the days where you're just not feeling it, you have to think about what this one or two or three positions can look like when it comes to September. And you're, you know, instead of getting 10th in the series, you got eighth. Guess what? That was an extra... 50 grand or something insane. So it's uh, it's real money we're talking about. And uh, yeah, I think everyone involved should be commended for, for bringing this to light. Yeah, and we'll flesh that out. Put the microscope on Chase Sexton. When does he return? I think in previous years, a rider is his status. If he's not 100%, just stays on the sidelines. Doesn't want to get beat. But he'd be giving up a lot of money if he does not come back. So we're going to see how it changes the game for the riders at the top to have this kind of change. Five and a half million dollars on the line. And our final thing, we're, next race, we're going to Lakewood, uh, Colorado. That race is over a mile high in elevation. So how do you think that's going to change the game there for bikes and bodies? It is a big change. Uh, I would say, first and foremost, the one big difference is all these guys will go to first gear start. And you couple that with we're using these starting grades, which is a new dynamic completely altogether. How do they make that adjustment? Because... You can't just go home and then do first gear starts and be like, okay, that's going to work because you're at sea level. That doesn't work the same way. So I would expect a lot of uh, testing and a lot of practice, as much, many practice starts as they can do. Um, if I am Monster Star Yamaha or any of these teams that are very good at the preparation side, I would maybe fly great to Colorado and then do practice starts on Friday. That's what I, that's what I would do because there's no other way to replicate what first gear is going to feel like with a scoop tire at elevation. You make a great point. We did have press day at Hangtown, but they didn't have the greats down. So the, no one got to use the track learning on Friday as practice starts. Expect to see some teams begging, begging them to put some greats down on Friday afternoon while they're there for press. But we all know they really consider it there to learn the track. So that'll be interesting to watch. Okay, we're going to wrap this show up. Keep on watching this weekend. We'll have more live coverage of Pro Motocross on Peacock. It starts with Race Day Live, presented by Motosport.com at noon Eastern. And then 3 Eastern, we will start four and a half hours of moto coverage. Again, on Peacock, I'll be there. Jason will be there. And James Stewart will join us in the booth. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights 
by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.